Good morning. Sorry for the delay. Oh my goodness. I am not great with technology and I just um, tried to go live on my laptop and I'm going live from home. So um, obviously my internet is not the quality that I would like it to be, um, but uh, we are getting it worked on. They're actually in the yard right now uh, putting in fiber optics. So they say by next week we should have um, full fiber optic uh, internet. So that'll be super exciting. And while I was juggling around trying to um, set up to at least be able to go live from my phone, I deleted my notes in the meantime. So um, that's all right. It's in my spirit. So um, today we're going to try to get this and go live anyways, despite all the technical difficulties I've already had this morning. Um, we're getting a late start. But I know it's an important message. It's one that God has just been working on my spirit with. And I know it's something that um, we all need to really pay attention to. And so today the title is Resist the Devil's Suggestions. Um, resist the Devil's Suggestions. Because, boy, he is out to steal, kill, and destroy. 24 hours, he's like a roaring lion. Now, we don't have to be afraid of that, but we do have to be vigilant and we have to be aware. And that's where I think in this season that awareness for whatever reason has really dropped where maybe we paid attention better in the past, but it we aren't paying attention like we should be right now of the devil's devices. With everything that's going on, it has pitted people against people and friend against friend and family against friend family. Um, it's mask or no mask. It's COVID worried or COVID not worried or um, Democrat or Republican. Um, it's just so many areas right now that there's room for the devil's suggestions in your mind. And with everything being shut down and everything being locked down, I know the devil's whispering in people's ears, you can't do this. You're not going to make it. I, I, you, everything's just going to go south. Everything's just going to crumble. Nothing's going to be okay anymore. He's just whispering his suggestions. And, you know, we know those aren't truth. First of all, God says that we don't have to be worried that he already overcame the world for us. He also says that nothing is impossible for them that believe. He also says he's going to work everything out for your good and no weapon formed can prosper. Listen, you do not have to listen to the devil's suggestions. When those come in, you need to resist them. And I know we know this, and I know you're like, oh, that's just elementary. It is, but for some reason in this season, even the elect, and that's what the word of God says, even the elect will be deceived. So even people that you would never imagine are being taken out by the enemy's suggestions in this time. Like, oh, everybody's against you, nobody's on that side with you, or or that person, you used to love them, but you don't love them anymore. You can't because they are on the same side as you are on. I mean, there's sides. There's now sides. Like, how awful is that, that we have sides? As Christians, we've made sides, and we've taken sides in so many different areas, and what it's done is it has allowed offense into the church. It's allowed it into the Christian's heart and mind. It's allowed it into the Christian's thoughts, and I don't care what it is for, what the reasoning, whether it's pandemic whether it's legislated, whether it's demanded by our governor, we still have no reason to, I don't know if I'm actually live. Um, let me see this. I'm sorry. I don't know if we are working or not. So let me just check real quick. Um, <laughs> nothing's working for me this morning with technology, but I'm going to get this message out no matter what. Okay, let's see. Oh, it looks like we are. Okay, we're going to continue on then. No matter what the reasoning is, no matter what you did it for, no matter what your heart and your motive was starting out, 
if you've gotten into this position of sides, then you need to really check your heart. Check it because the word of God says in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 4, that we walk in the flesh, but we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to pulling down of strongholds. And then Ephesians six twelve tells us, for our fight is not against flesh and blood. Hear me, this is God. This is his word speaking. I don't care what you've rationalized it under or what you've labeled it under or what your pretense was or your intentions were. If you are fighting or you find yourself fighting against flesh and blood, you're not fighting the right source. We wrestle not against flesh and blood and principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. That is our only fight. Your fight is not with your family member. It's not with your friend. It's not with your coworker. It's not with your church member. It's not with your pastor. Listen, you wrestle not against flesh and blood. It is the enemy of your soul that is trying to take you out. He's trying to get you offended. He's trying to get you to make, make sides. He's trying to put you on the opposite side as where you were before. He's trying to take you out. And you know what? It's gonna take you What's going to happen is if we don't root it out, like, listen, you can't just ignore that this has happened. You can't just ignore that you've had these thoughts and you've had these feelings, actual feelings of hatred and strife towards the body of Christ, towards the, your brothers and sisters in Christ, towards your neighbors, towards your friends, towards your families, actually hatred and strife. Listen, you can't just ignore that. If we ignore it, what's gonna happen is we're gonna find ourselves one day outside of the blessing. We're gonna find ourselves out of the covering of God, out of the favor of God, out of the power of God, and out of the anointing of God, and we're not even going to realize that's where we're at until we've already launched ourselves there and we're rooted in there. There is a root that has been dug down inside when we don't resist the devil's suggestions. If you haven't resisted, and I, again, I know there's good reasonings, there's great um, pretense for why you initially did what you did, but it's turned into a root inside of you, a root of negativity. Listen, if you're having negative thoughts, it is not from God. It is not from God. Nothing is impossible with God. Everything good comes from God. And he says, think on these things. Whatsoever things are of lovely, are of good report, are of are praiseworthy. Those are the things we're going to think on. That's God. Any sort of negativity that you have accepted, that you have justified, that you have rationalized, has turned into a root and you've got to do something about it. First, you've got to take responsibility for it. You know what, God, I am so sorry that I allowed this to go to this place. I know what your word says. Your word says I have no fight with another human being. They are my brothers and sisters, and I am called to love with God's unconditional love. And any negativity, hatred, strife that is built up inside of me, it is sin and it is wrong. It is sin and it is wrong. Listen to me. It will take you out of the blessing of God. It's going to take you out of the anointing. It's going to take you out of the power of God. It's going to take you out of the presence of God. And you're not even recognizing it. You don't even realize it. You don't even know that you're being taken out of the presence and the power of God right now. And it's so vital and so important for us to pay attention to this. We've got to uproot it right now in order to get ourselves connected back to the vine. You've severed yourself 
from the vine if you've dwelt in that negative place, that place of hatred, that place of strife, that place of gossip and busybodying. It's not of God and it's damaging you. The suggestions of the devil that have come in your mind, no matter what reason they have come there, whether they're justified or rationalized in your own mind, it is sin. It is not God. It is not God. And we have to wake up, church, and realize what has happened here. The the enemy is causing division inside of your heart and mind. And he is taking you out. And he is going to weaken you. And you aren't even going to know it or realize it. So we've got to catch this. And now, maybe it's already a root inside of you. Maybe it's rooted inside of you. You're going to have to dig that root out and sever it and cut it off and resist the devil. James 4, 7 says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And once there's that root in there, you're going to have to, sometimes you have to really dig and dig and dig and push with that shovel. So you're going to have to resist and resist and resist, especially where you've allowed and embraced and accepted this negativity, this hatred, this strife, this division, this taking of sides, which is not the kingdom of God. Behold, the commanded blessing is where there is unity. Where there is unity is the commanded blessing. And I don't want to walk in any other place, especially right now with everything going crazy in the world. If you're outside of the umbrella of God, you're crazy. Get back in the umbrella of God. Get in unity with your brothers and sisters. Get on your face and repent before God for being out of unity with the family of God and your brothers and sisters in Christ and get back under the blessing and cover of God. It is so important that we get to the root of this. We dig this root out and we deal with it because we're going to find ourselves in a place we don't want to be at. We can't afford to be at that. I cannot afford to be offended. You cannot afford in this season to be offended. We have got to be able to walk in the supernatural in this time. We've got to be able to declare a thing and it will be. We've got to be able to speak and it shall come forth. Listen, you have to make sure you remain unoffendable, especially in this time. But I just, I feel like so many have embraced it. The word of God says, even the elect will be deceived. So many have embraced it under the guise of it's okay because this is, this is what we have to do in this season. We have to take sides in this season. We have to tear one another down, down. We have to speak against them. We have to allow this inside our heart. We have to speak about, we have to tell everybody we know all this negativity that the devil suggests in our mind. No, you do not. Cover your mouth. Bite your tongue. The word of God says, if you don't have anything good to say, don't say anything all. That's not your mama's old adage. That's the word of God. It says that if, if let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, only that which builds, encourages, and edifies. If it's not building, and if it's not encouraging, and it's not edifying, it's not God. It is not God. It is poisoning you. It is tainting you. And don't be deceived. Whatever a man sows, that is what they are going to reap. So shake yourself out of this. Shake yourself out. Get on your face before God and just repent before him. And guess what he says? He's going to come in and he's going to heal your land. He's going to restore you. He will run to you. Turn to me and I'll turn to you. You can change everything right now just by resisting those suggestions that the enemy is putting in your mind. And you know, it could be suggestions of negativity towards other people, but it also could be suggestions of negativity towards yourself, that you just can't do this, that you're just not cut out for it, or you're just not, you just, you're just done, you're just tired, you're just weary. You know, there's so many scriptures in the word of God that he'll take your heavy burdens. If you're weary, he's going to give you rest. He is a good and faithful God, but we have got to resist the devil. We can't allow his suggestions 
And he's 24-7, he's planting those suggestions in your mind. 24-7, he's coming at you. You've got to be aware of the enemy's ad uh, advances and his devices. And listen, maybe you're like, oh man, don't let pride keep you from repenting and humbling yourself before God. Don't let pride keep you out. Pride is going to come before a fall. So if in any way you hear the word of the Lord that's been spoken this morning and you're like, ooh, maybe I've done, oh, I've definitely, oh, uh, yeah, I've got some strife. I've got some negative things to say. i got some stuff to say. Maybe that's you right now. Listen, you need to repent before the Lord and humble yourself and pray. And then he's going to restore your land. You cannot afford in this season to be offended. You cannot afford to sacrifice the anointing, the power and the presence of God. And that is exactly what you're doing. Do not be deceived. I have seen so many people pick one scripture out of the entire Bible and try to stand on that one scripture. Listen to me. The word of God says over and over to watch your thoughts, to watch your words, to think on these things, to speak these things, let no corrupt community over and over again. If those are things are going on in your heart and mind, you are not following God. It is a dangerous place to be. You are fallen for the suggestions of the enemy and that is not a place you want to remain in. There is probably even a root that has already locked in and anchored you into this, cut that root right out. Swallow any kind of pride and just come back before God and get yourself free of that. Get yourself free and think on things that are good. Think on things that are lovely. Speak truth and things that are praiseworthy, things that are good, and resist, resist, resist over and over again the devil's suggestions, and then he will have to flee from you. I love you so much, and I really pray today that this has sparked in your heart and in your spirit, man, and that you will listen and heed the word of the Lord. I get it. I understand. Listen, this is what God is speaking to me first. When I come to you, I'm just sharing what God is working on in me, and I know if he's working on, on, on it in me, that he's working on it in others too, so Take the word of the Lord today. Heed the word of the Lord. Uproot that thing and get yourself under the safety of the blessing and favor of the Lord as quickly as you possibly can. Don't delay. Do it now. I love you and I'll see you back here next week.